Miami Mayor Francis Suarez has just filed paperwork to officially jump into the 2024 presidential election, joining an already crowded Republican field. Caden Dawson joins us now. He's the former South Carolina Republican Party chair and a Nikki Haley campaign surrogate. Caden, let me ask you a question and be as candid as you possibly can. If the South Carolina Republican presidential primary were held today, who would win? Well, Major, that's not a hard question to answer because <laughs> I think what our viewers don't understand that you and I do know is this is their winner-take-all primaries. Mm -hmm. If it was a runoff, it'd be Nikki Haley, but there's not going to be a runoff. Donald right. Trump's got a solid, solid 35 or 40 percent, got about a 6 percent bump in the first indictment. Uh, so the, the base that he has is pretty solid. But, Major, it's early, early in this process. This I watched your... Your, your show earlier, and it broke down real well where we are in this process. I think what I tell you as a lifelong Republican and doing it a long time, this, this is a mix between Watergate and Whitewater, and special prosecutors both places, uh, except Donald Trump is not a sitting president. He acts like he is you know, with all the detail he has and the planes and the cars and the events, but he's not. So I, I think it's a long, hot summer. He's winning right now. He'll win in the short run because he's sucking the oxygen out of everybody's campaign. But there's going to be a moment that, that people are going to have a chance to break out. We've got some wonderful candidates. There are too many, Major. There are too many. And we'll, they'll weave themselves out between now and Labor Day because they'll run out of money. What, under the banner of possibly too many candidates, Miami Mayor Francis Suarez is just jumping in. Your reaction to that, to the degree you might have some? Major, I saw that he's a very interesting candidate. Uh, he brings a whole other dynamic to the race. First of all, let's see if he can raise $50 million. That's what it takes. You got to start off with about $10 million and see if he can do it. I mean, Chris Christie just got in, another well-known figure. Uh, Mayor Suarez, Suarez is not very well-known, uh, but it is interesting that he's in the race. I think a lot of people are seeing that there's a chance for a figure here in this in this 36 or 34 count indictment that the president's under. Um, and, and again, that's that, that you've watched the news, that's all you've gotten all day today, Major. And mm -hmm. and that might be good for the president right now. Uh, for President Trump, it's horrible for the Republican Party at the moment. Why? Well, I mean, right now we've got to live through the summer of 37 indictments. We've got to listen to whether national security was affected. You look at the documents, Major, and You've been doing this a long time. When you start reading the stuff about uh, about nuclear secrets, Iran battle plans, and this stuff, and and I, I listened to what Governor Christie had to say, uh, and he made some valid points that that we didn't have to be here. I know the base sees this as a political un, uh, unfortunate event where the Democrats aren't being being being, uh, being indicted, and Republicans are. But we've now got to wade through the fact that that's a there's a lot of stuff sitting in those documents that we're never going to see. We're never going to see the redacted parts. Uh, and it's going to throw out. I talked to some people yesterday and asked if you thought that there were national security secrets that would affect our armed forces, what would be your opinion? And I got back one after the other. I'd have to change my mind on President Trump. To that point, uh, the candidate you're a surrogate for, Nikki Haley, said that the president was reckless. I think she said extremely reckless. But then she also said if it were brought to her desk as president, she would very seriously consider pardoning former President Trump if he were convicted on these charges. How do you reconcile those? I reconcile that, that we're going to be so worn out with this by the time we get there, Major. Uh, this is going to be going on all the way till Election Day, most likely. Um, and whether Trump stays in the race and whatever happens, I understand where Governor Haley's coming from. This, we, we are already worn out with all this stuff. We had a midterms where we should have wiped up the deck as Republicans, and we didn't. Uh, we barely won the majority in the House. Thank God for that. But at the end of the day, I understand what Nikki's saying is. I think, I think just like we saw uh, the past presidents and, and, and their problems, the American public is going to get tired of all of this antics and personal politics and destruction and want to move past and start dealing with the deficit, dealing with the issues about China and things I think that matter to everyday Americans.
Kate, very quickly, you've invoked the name of Chris Christie a couple of times. He has said the only way to get the nomination is to run through Donald Trump. You cannot tiptoe around him. Do you agree? Uh, I think there'll be a chance to sidestep around him at some time. You're going to have a couple of these people who are going to get together, Major. They're, this is going to be a very unusual cycle. You're going to have some people picking some candidates to run with themselves. You're going to have a couple of debates. He's not going to show up, Major, unless y'all really start hammering him to show because he doesn't have to. Uh, his ego might get him there, but the debates were the place where he could, he, he, it won't be like 2016 where you can give everybody nicknames. It's going to be different. But let's see. It's a long summer, and we got a little while there, but right now it's the president to lose, and it's the president to drag us all down in the gutter where, where, where we don't want to be. Caden Dawson, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Major.